Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. You know, today's video was going to be the production of these two step pulleys. Very much identical to the way I did it when I did the EL1 kit, the engine lathe series. So if you don't feel like watching this one, watch that one. It's already cut. Now, the fringe benefit of doing these models is you end up with a variety of arbors and backup plates and drivers and such. Well, today's video I thought would be a great way to just say, look at this guy right here. This is an extension for a live center that gets you down to the point where you can work very close to the center and still have room for your tools. This is extremely easy to make. It's even easier to make if you have a three quarter inch center drill. Just drill a piece of material, part it off, turn it down and you got one. So I'm gonna show you a way that you can do it if you don't have a three quarter inch center drill or a monster chuck and you may have a mini, mini lathe. So let's knock one of these out real quick. Probably the handiest thing you ever put in your toolbox. Let's do it. First thing you're going to want to do is figure out exactly which life center you use and uh, how much room you need for your tools. I'm going to use this guy right here, and I want this tip to go in about three quarters of an inch. That's about what, 20 millimeters, 19 millimeters? So that's my target. 60 degree conical bore, three quarters of an inch deep. And I'm going to use a quarter inch pilot drill so I don't have to bore all the way to a sharp point. If I can bore it down to a quarter inch diameter, I'm ahead of the game. So that'll be step number one. Load the material, drill the hole, then shoot for the angle. I'm making my center out of brass because I have a bunch of this material laying around and it's tough. It's harder than aluminum in my opinion. And probably in a lot of people's opinions. Face it off. Whenever I do a drilling operation and I just push the drill through, I will always bring the drill back and visually align it to the surface and run it in one more time in case the drill pushed back in the chuck or the material pushed back in the column. You can be assured that the depth is what you think it is and the next tool in line doesn't get a rude surprise because the hole's not very deep. Now, quite often people ask, how do you know when you're at the bottom of the hole and you're not going beyond center and the back of the boring bar is going to crash into the conical feature you just made? Well, the easiest way to know that you are on center and you're not going to crash the back of your boring bar into your feature is to position your boring bar so that you know it's within the pilot hole that you just did. Okay, I'm doing this with the compound. Or excuse me, I'm doing this with the cross slide. And this is going to be a counterclockwise draw on the cross slide just so that the cross slide has no desire to creep during the compound cutting. And this boring bar is a little bit fat for that hole, so I'm just going to bring it above center just a hair. Bringing it too far off center will affect an angle if you have one dialed in precision higher off center or the lower off center you are the flatter that angle gets so be careful I think that might work let's try it and find out with the compound set at 30 degrees and that is 30 degrees off the center line of the machine not 30 degrees off the face so same angle as the live center make it as big as you can I totally missed my lesson. Okay, but once you have the boring bar lined up for the hole and you know that it'll float in and out of the hole, don't move the cross slide anymore. Back the compound out. Once you get back to where you started on the compound, back to your zero or back to your Sharpie mark line on the side of the machine, you'll know that that bar has finished the cut and it is clear of the opposite side. Sooner or later, I'll get there. All depth movements, all cutting motion is done by moving the carriage in and out. Okay, do not move the cross slide. 
If you want to make a deeper cut, move the carriage. All right, now we're ready. I think. Deburred accordingly. Make sure that it's nice and round so you don't cut yourself at a later date. And then try it on your center and see if it jumps around. If it does, you're going to need to set your compound to a precision angle. And coincidentally, I'll put a link to a video that will show you exactly how to do that in the video description below. Now knowing that the deepest feature on this part is a quarter inch diameter hole, three quarters of an inch deep, cut it accordingly when you flip it around. I have a black mark on mine that I like to stay away from, so let's stay away from it. And I am going to leave about a half an inch inside, the rest is going to hang out. So split the difference. Concentric is not all that important right now. Strictly for clearance purposes, I'll put the boring bar back in. I'm going to run the machine in reverse and still use the compound to put a matching angle on that corner right there. Sometimes you just get lucky, guys. I did not stage that, I promise you. Man. Love it. Alright, let's see. There we go. Now you have a funnel. That is an extension for your center. It's going to, under pressure turning operations, this is really going to come in handy. So let's set it up and pressure turn something. I thought you might like to see that. Real handy. If you don't have one, make one. You're going to be glad you did. Make it out of something soft so you can hit it with a tool if you need to. 